Hello friends, I think it's high time we do this, a talk about money, about guitar prices, value and cost, return of investment. Let's try to forget the magic of tone wood and the romance of handmade guitars for a while. It's the nuts and bolts time. I'm well aware that this is a provocative topic not so easy to approach and very easily misunderstood but i'm willing to take the risk and you know my goal is to remove all the opinion and emotion from this game and con concentrate on the palpable concrete facts so it's going to be just me talking here for quite a while so you know if your expectation is demos and stuff like that it's not going to happen here, so you can move on to the next video. So here comes the first challenge. Listen carefully. When you bought a factory-made electric guitar in the 1950s, your purchase did not require you to make an ethical choice. But today, when I purchase an electric guitar, it always, like always, always involves a choice of values. Just the same as when choosing between fair trade bananas and the other ones. You know, it's kind of the same thing. So I say it again. Back in the 1950s, buying an electric guitar did not require you to make an ethical choice. But today it does. Every purchase you make today comes with an ethical footprint. So, you know, if, if we look at the guitar industry today, we can see the same phenomenon that has happened to most other fields of industries. Um, the existence of most of the so-called big brand guitar factories in the world today is dependent on money made from producing goods in other countries than the country of origin. And usually the reason for this is simply that the product can be made cheaper that way. Cheap labor in the third world countries enables that. So not always, but very often exploitation is involved as well. So if this outsourcing from poor countries would come to an abrupt end, like poof, gone, many of the guitar factories we know would die. It's because the business of most mainstream guitar corporations depends on the cheap production. You know, that's because that's where the big volume sales are made, cheap guitars. Okay, so um, isn't it a perfect solution for me to stop supporting the cheap line of my favorite guitar brand and buy only their genuine stuff, you know, the, the custom shop or whatnot? Think carefully. Does that change anything? A bit, but not really, because I would still be supporting a corporation that lives off exploitation. A company that offers me kind of both fair trade and unfair trade bananas. And remember, it doesn't make any difference regarding the ethical footprint if a company camouflages the cheap stuff behind another brand name they own. Sorry, it still doesn't fly. And you know what? The quality of the guitar produced by such corporation doesn't make things any better. Good quality doesn't justify exploitation, don't you agree? Well, my point is not to make you feel guilty about the guitars you own or, or want to own. I'm facing these choices every day too. Buying food, clothing, home electronics, there's no escape. We live in a man-made world of exploitation. There's no way around it. We're all in the same boat. But my point is to make you understand this mechanism. I want you to know that no matter how romantic, powerful, tempting or cool or majestic the advertisement appears to be, the guitar is not really that different from the banana. Every purchase leaves an ethical footprint behind. So. If you consider the possibility of purchasing a guitar made in the fair trade spirit, a guitar whose maker doesn't exploit poorer countries, what exactly are your options then? 
Think about this. Which brands or makers operate on a healthy, sustainable, ethical basis? So I have great news for you. There are a lot of them. Thousands. Thousands of options. But most of them are really, really small businesses. There are a few bigger ones, factories as well, but not so many anymore, which is really a pity. There used to be a guitar factory in Finland. Did you know that? But it died like so many other factories in Europe. So now we have mainly small business to choose from. And when you look at this very lively and extremely fragmented bunch of small guitar companies, there is another common factor to them, in addition to the fact that they're generally small businesses. You know what that other common factor is? Well, their guitars tend to be pretty pricey. They're generally way more expensive than the average consumer is used to when walking into a guitar store or checking out what the online super guitar stores of the world are offering. So why is it then that the guitars made by individual artisans, luthiers, small companies, cost so much more money? Some may feel confused about the actual monetary value of the handmade guitar, while others may question the concept of handmade guitar altogether. What is a handmade guitar, anyways? Is it made with power tools, CNC, manual machines? Where to draw the line? What is small, what is big? All these questions are absolutely valid and understandable. And to keep things in tight leash, I'm reminding you and myself that we're now really attempting to stick to the facts only. In my work as a guitar maker, CEO of a small business, chairman of the Guild of Finnish Luthiers, and as a vice president of EGB, the European Guitar Builder Association, I've been confronted with these questions over the years repeatedly, over and over again. And I've learned that a handmade guitar, a luthier built guitar, a boutique guitar, can be so many things and that it's impossible, totally impossible to draw the line in any particular spot because the moment you do so, you notice that there are people, some makers, some companies standing right on that line I just drew. So I won't even attempt to draw the line anymore. I've done that so many times in the past and every time it has backfired. So instead I would conclude that any business Regardless if it's big or small, luthier built, serial production, CNC, manual machinery, whatever, every business has costs, a cost structure. And in the very minimum, the money that comes in, which is the guitar sales in this occasion, has to cover those costs. And these costs include labor, taxes, insurance, marketing, research development, so on and so on. When looking at the typical cost structure of a small business, um, and particularly uh, a small business geared towards handcraft of any sort, um, labor is usually the biggest single cost we need to worry about. And the well-known fact that most luthiers are not exactly wealthy people tells us the reality that it is hard work to make the ends meet. And if one wants to stick to working in any of the first world countries and to keep the ethical footprint sustainable, there aren't really any shortcuts available. So, you know, if a luthier who works alone makes, say, 20, 30 guitars in a year, all those costs I listed previously need to be covered by the money coming in from those 20 to 30 guitars, right? Well, in my company, we're six people and make about 10 guitars a month. Um, less than one might expect for so many people, but that's what we make. Can't make more the way we've chosen to build ours. So the money we earn from those 10 guitars a month has to cover all the costs of running our business. Making a living of the six of us, the insurances, the taxes, the materials, the mortgages, the research and development, marketing, and so on. And this, my dear friends, making the ends meet, dictates the basic price level 
of luthier-built boutique handmade guitar in general. It's simple as that. But it's important to say basic price level. It's important to say in general, because th there are obviously other factors that play into the whole as well. More about that in a while. But first, a quick rewind. First, we understood what a fair trade banana is. Then we learned that there are perfectly logical reasons for the fact that the fair trade banana costs more. You know, remove exploitation from the game and the prices climb higher, regardless if we talk about bananas or guitars. So here's another challenge for you. Think about this. What if it is not the guitars by these small businesses, the luthiers, the little factories that are too expensive in the first place? What if instead most of the guitars in the world are in fact too cheap? Rewind, repeat. What if it is the individual craftsmen and small shops all around the world that are representing a more realistic and fair price level for a guitar? And what if it is the common industrial exploitation that has been going on for decades and decades that has distorted our perception of costs and value? Again, I want to calibrate our brains and state that my intention is not to push through my opinions here. I do all I can to stay on neutral ground and I'm not here to blame anyone or defend anyone. I'm, I'm only here showing you an optional perspective to look at things, okay? We're now at a point where I hope there's someone still watching the video agreeing that when I'm out to buy a guitar with a sustainable ethical footprint, my choice of manufacturers doesn't necessarily include the most typical household brands. And before we move on, let's address this. The fact that a guitar is made in a factory doesn't make it a bad guitar or a good guitar. Factories can put out great stuff, totally worthless stuff and anything in between. And guess what? The same goes for the handmade. There's no difference. I tell you, it's really easy to make a shitty guitar by hand. A lot harder to make a great one. So the bottom line is this, the size of the company making the guitar does not guarantee anything about the quality per se. Making guitars has become a very trendy business and hobby during the course of the last decade or so. And there are thousands and thousands of pro shops to choose from. Some luthiers are more experienced than others. Some guitars appeal to your taste better than others. Certain websites are more convincing than others. Customer services differ from company to another. And even though most of the Luthier tribe are good people, the truth is that anyone can start a company and claim to be a Luthier. So my word of advice to you is this. When you go out shopping, check the background of the builder you're considering to buy from. Do not rely only on information you get from the builder. It's biased information. Same goes for myself. If you're interested in my guitars, you know, check out forums like the Gear page or wherever you can think of. Internet with all its discussion forums, other platforms will most likely give you some answers. And if you can't find any kind of track record of the maker, that alone should tell you something, right? You can also ask the maker to give you contact info of some clients. References. People owning his or her guitars. Well, okay, this might again be biased information, but could also be a useful way to learn more about the maker. So anyways, my advice is do your homework before you make a decision. It might be a long and windy, but fun road to find a match. And if you don't know at all where to start from, there are databases, lists available online. There are also exhibitions, guitar shows all over the world. Some of them focusing only to the concept of handmade guitar. Okay, so here I can throw in a little advertisement. The Holy Grail Guitar Show in Berlin is one of the best places to attend if you want to get the most complete glimpse 
the most colorful possible variation on one take of what's available and what's the world of handmade guitar about. There are other great shows as well. In fact, bigger and smaller events for handmade guitar have become really popular over the last year, so I'm sure you'll find something that will suit you. Okay, let's move on. And here's a warning. I'm now using my own guitar brand as an example. Not so much to advertise them, but to give you some really concrete hands-on examples of prices. I know my prices, so better to stick to them than talk of others. And while other builders might not have their pricing built exactly like we do, there's still common ground to be found, I'm sure. So first, a disclaimer. Notice, we're recording this video in 2017. And any actual sums of money I might mention here are naturally subject to change. And also, if you're watching this video in a country outside Europe, there might be exchange ratings, import costs to be considered. So think of the numbers I'm talking about more in a referential sense. Okay, the price range of my guitar starts from just above 3000 euros. Certain other Rokangas models start from around 6000 euros. And by choosing the rarest pieces of wood, uh, other custom options such as complex pearl inlays, wood carvings, time-consuming one-off features, or whatever kind, etc. The most costly guitars we've made at this point have been in the range of 20 to 50,000 euros a piece. So, let's try to make some sense to this. First of all, when you order a guitar from me with the price point at, say, 15,000 euros, do you then get a better musical instrument than you would get from me for 3,500 euros? The answer is no. No need for such expectations and speculations. You know, every guitar that bears my name is made in the house by the same people here in Harviala, Finland. So every guitar is of equal quality, regardless of the price tag. So my point is, our price range does not reflect a variety in the quality of the instruments. That's not where the price differences come from. I'll say again, this is very important. So my guitar with a lower price point is every bit as good a musical instrument as my guitar with a higher price point. You know, and as far as I know, this is a fairly common policy for luthiers, so nothing extraordinary here. The reason I wanted to mention this, however, is that the major guitar industry doesn't operate in the same way, and this causes sometimes confusion for people who aren't familiar with the world of handmade guitar. What does reflect to the price is the type of my guitar model we're talking about. A somewhat simple instrument with a bolt-on neck, with pretty basic appointments, is faster to make, and so the starting from price point is lower. You know, less working hours, not so rare and expensive materials, lower price point, common sense, right? And as a comparison, a set neck guitar with a carved top, it takes quite a lot more working hours to make such an instrument, and this reflects in the price. So it's as simple as that. Here's an important point though. I'm an idealist, a music lover, and I think of my guitars primarily as instruments to make music with. And because of this, my romantic relationship with music, it has always been essentially important for me that guitar players could afford to buy my guitars. And currently, in the year 2017, three to four thousand euros is the lowest price point where we can go. We just can't make guitars cheaper than that in order to make the ends meet. Sometimes smarter businessmen have told me that I should concentrate only to the collectibles the luxury market, and quit the models with the lower price point. And maybe they're right. It's just that I don't see myself as a businessman. I'm a music lover and a guitar enthusiast. I want my guitars to be played. Sure, some of you feel that three to four thousand euros starting price is way above what a player can afford. Well, I say to you guys one thing. Thank God you're not violin players. With 4,000 euros, 
you couldn't even get a master grade bowl to play the violin. The bottom line, is a master built electric guitar for three to four thousand euros really that expensive? It's not. I'm sorry, it's not. So let's move on. As we start approaching the price point of 10,000 euros and up of electric guitars, there's a bit of a shift in the focus. Don't get me wrong, things are never black and white. It's impossible to draw any lines here. But in my experience, the people who buy instruments from me in this price range are, well, they're as well, without a doubt, looking for a great musical instrument, but they're also on a quest for something else. See the higher the price point climbs, the more the artistic perspective of the instrument starts to take lead. A collision of two worlds, or a fusion of two worlds. The guitar perceived as a tool for making music, and the guitar perceived as a piece of art. Some guitars fulfill clearly one of those purposes, while some others fulfill the other purpose. And then there are endless varieties in between. There are certain guitar makers out there who have clearly been identified more as tool makers, while certain others have been more perceived as artists making art guitars. And the prices of the instruments by some of these art guitar makers obey more the rules of the art world than the guitar world. You know how it is. Some art doesn't cost anything, whereas some other art costs fortunes. Now, some of you may question whether an expensive art instrument, let's say 50,000 euros, is worth the money. Well, if the artist, in this case the guitar maker, is well established and there is a flow of buyers for the instruments, then this proves the instrument is worth the cost for its buyers, right? In other words, the reputation of the builder, the brand, the artist is strong enough to command such prices. So if you say it's not worth the money, you're actually meaning it's not worth the money for you. Which is perfectly okay. You're right. It's not worth the money for you, since you feel that way. But it very well can be, and it is worth the money for someone else. See, often the buyer of such an instrument considers the purchase as an investment. One day, 20, 50 years from now, who knows? Some investments turn out to be stellar, while others might not. Some investors have also better nose for great investments. But nobody has the crystal ball, unfortunately. One thing is for sure though, the vintage guitar market of today won't keep on repeating itself forever. You know, the 1959 Burst Les Paul phenomenon will not happen again for a 2017 Burst Les Paul. Sorry. If you thought so, you'd better wake up and look around. No, if one wants to speculate on which type of contemporary era electric guitar will be the future collectible 50 to 60 years from now, then my best bet would be the handmade stuff by the best known modern day luthiers, not the factory made product. Why? Because the world is saturated by the stuff the factories keep spilling out. There's just too much of it. And then again, made by a luthier doesn't automatically mean that a guitar is a future collectible. Some of them will, others won't. No crystal ball, sorry. So who am I then? A tool maker? An artist? Well, that's my dilemma. I am both. And I know I'm not alone feeling this way. Um, I get great satisfaction of making tools for players, and I absolutely love to work with instruments that merge with the world of art. I love to push the envelope to new directions, both on conceptual level, as well as regarding the actual instruments. So I'm balancing on a ledge that some have said to me shouldn't be done. They say, one needs to have a clear profile, clear brand recognition. It's either this or that. Well, luckily it's a free world, so I can disagree and I can walk my own path, just like you can. 
And it's not for me to judge whether my guitars are worth what they cost. That's for the buying audience to judge by buying or not buying. It's very simple. The choice is yours. The last words of wisdom about guitar prices. Well, I've noticed over the years that a lot of guitar players and guitar enthusiasts are quite the romantics. You know, some of them are more aware of it than others, but yeah, they're often idealists and hopeless romantics. And a guitar is often for them an extension of their body to express their ideas, their personalities, communication tools for their souls. So in this regard, one could say that I'm not at all actually in the guitar business. No, I'm, I'm in the happiness business. And then again, one could claim, oh, you can't put price tag on happiness, but I can, I just did.